It's bizarre, but we have details just ahead. By the stock market crash in March, March 18th was the low point. But Senator Richard Burr was totally fine. He'd sold off virtually his entire net worth in mid-February, went to cash, as they say on Wall Street. And then he sat back and said nothing, as top government officials told us. Everything was fine. Don't worry. It looks like insider trading. Bird denies that. He claims he's just brilliant at timing the market. His last private sector job was selling lawnmowers, so probably true. The FBI doesn't seem to believe it, though yesterday they seized his cell phone as part of an investigation, went to his house, and we look forward, of course, to what they find. Today, Burr finally stepped down as chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, at least for the duration of the investigation. That's a welcome development. It should have happened two months ago, but Mitch McConnell refused to remove him. And yet here's the weird part, the really remarkable part of the story. Some in Washington are not happy. Why are they backing Richard Burr? Well, for the same reason they've abandoned so many other principles and so much common sense. Russia! Mother Jones editor Mark Fullman said this ominously, quote, this investigation raises questions about Bill Barr, the attorney general, targeting the one powerful Republican who authenticated the Russia investigation. Huh? So Richard Burr was one of the Republicans, and there were a number of them, who allowed this nonsense to go on for three years. So, of course, he should get immunity from investigation. That's their position. Insanity. Ultimately, though, the Rush host was not created by Richard Byrne. It definitely wasn't created by Mike Flynn's routine cell phone call with the Russian ambassador. It was created by the outgoing Obama administration in collusion with the press and the so-called intel community and law enforcement, the FBI. Victor Davis Hansen is a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution. We're always grateful to have him on, as he is tonight. Doctor, thanks so much for coming on. What do, you, what do you make of this? Give us the overview, as you're so good at doing. You know, I think in the last four years, we've been living in a veritable empire of lies, Tucker. It was based on this Christopher Steele dossier, and we found out it was completely fabricated. And worse, he destroyed his own sources. So he said that all the information that was secure and verifiable, and now it doesn't even exist. We were told that the Mueller team were all-stars and the Dream team and the Hunter Killer team, and they turned out to be partisan incompetence. They tried to fabricate at a cost of $40 million a non-existent crime of collusion. And then when they couldn't do that, they tried to say that he, Donald Trump obstructed a non-existent crime. There were heroes, though, in all of this, Tucker, because there were a different type of legal team. And we had these septuagenarians like Ty Cobb and John Dowd that were ridiculed as country hick lawyers, and they outsmarted and they out... Uh, lawyered, if I could use that term, the dream team at every corner. We, Sydney Powell came out of nowhere, and she was not an Ivy League grandee, but she's done a very well, good job. It wasn't the Harvard Law graduate Adam Schiff that told the truth. It was the ex-dairy farmer that was ridiculed as a hick, Devin Nunez. And then all of a sudden we found that there was a guy named Rick Vanell and Bill Barr that people had just written off that were really courageous and autonomous. And I think we've got to dispense, if we look over this entire fiasco, the whole myth that the left is somehow the custodian of civil liberties. It's been a half century since Frank Church's select committee investigated the CIA and the FBI. But this group of progressives, this generation, they cheered on every abuse of the CIA, the DIA, James Clapper, uh, James Comey, John Brennan. And we got to get rid of the idea there's an independent media, or even in a media that exists, they fuse with this progressive agenda. We had these people go under oath, Clapper and Comey and McCabe, and say one thing, and then go out to CNN and MSNBC and contradict themselves because there was no penalty for perjury. They're, those so, networks are paying these people as, quote, contributors. They literally work yeah. there, a lot of them. Yeah, they were working there to, to help their own uh, case. Why they were under suspicion, they were going out and testifying when they were in danger of perjury to one thing and then saying another when they were under pay to satisfy an audience and get ratings. And it's... one final thing, Tucker, that I think our problem is that the sheer enormity that an iconic representation of an administration could be so culpable. What do you do when CIA, FBI, DIA, national security, they're all culpable and they've done something we've never seen in our lifetime. It's almost an unbearable truth that we can't, we can't even fathom. The extent is so, the magnitude is so great. And that Barack Obama lorded over this entire thing is just incomprehensible for the left. It's, it's
It staggers the imagination. It does. And it must be fixed because there, there is no governing a country under this system. Because no, democracy is meaningless if elected leaders don't have control, um, obviously. Uh, Victor Davis Hanson, that, you, know, you never disappoint, and I appreciate it. Thanks very much for Thank coming on. Thank you for having me.